Welcome. From Headquarters Mastering Studios. In this video I'll walk you through how to use the Cedar Audio Adaptive Limiter 2. This is a powerful tool for controlling dynamics and shaping the loudness of your audio without losing quality. Limiters are used in audio production to boost the average signal level and control the maximum output level while ensuring that peaks don't go above your desired limit. Why is this limiter adaptive? Most limiters work by watching the peak level and reducing it when it crosses a set threshold. Some limiters divide the audio into frequency bands and limit each band separately. The Adaptive Limiter 2 is unique. Instead of simply reducing peaks or breaking the audio into bands, it uses a smart algorithm that continuously adjusts an EQ profile. This means it can manage the peaks while keeping the integrity of the original sound using an attenuation profile. The attenuation profile is what shapes how the limiter works. It's controlled by how quickly it changes over time. In the display you'll see two lines. The upper line shows the minimum amount of reduction applied at each frequency over a short time. The lower line shows the peak reduction applied. As you adjust the settings, these lines will shift showing how the limiter is working across the frequency spectrum. Let's go over some of the key controls you'll be adjusting. Let's talk about the spectral and temporal settings. The low spectral setting keeps the limiter's action flat across frequencies and slow over time, similar to how a single band limiter with a slow release would behave. The high spectral setting allows more variation between frequencies while still keeping the response slow. It's like a multiband limiter with a slow release. The temporal low setting allows the limiter to vary quickly across the spectrum, but keeps things consistent over time. It's useful for a frequency-dependent response. The temporal high setting gives the limiter maximum freedom, letting it respond quickly across frequencies and time. It's great for boosting loudness, but it may alter the character of the sound. There are two separate temporal controls, one for low frequencies and one for high frequencies. The low frequency temporal controls how quickly the limiter reacts to low frequencies. The high temporal control does the same for high frequencies. If you set the low frequency temporal to minus 10 the limiter behaves like the original Cedar adaptive limiter. As you increase the setting you'll get more perceived loudness, but it could introduce distortion at very high values. Now, let's talk about the threshold and ceiling controls. The threshold sets the input level where the limiter starts working. The more you lower the threshold the more limiting you apply. The ceiling controls the maximum output level. For example, if the input signal goes above the threshold the limiter will reduce it. As you decrease the threshold, the loudness will increase because more of the signal is being limited. The ceiling ensures that peaks never exceed the level you set. Let's look at the oversampling function. Oversampling is a key feature that helps the limiter work more accurately by catching intersample peaks. When this is on, you can safely set the ceiling to exactly 0 dBs and the limiter will prevent clipping. Let's talk about using the Adaptive Limiter 2 in practice. Here's a quick walkthrough of how you might use the Adaptive Limiter 2 in your project. Let's set the ceiling to 0 dB. This ensures your output never exceeds that level. Now adjust the threshold so the limiter kicks in when the input signal exceeds the threshold. If you want more loudness, lower the threshold. You'll see more activity in the profile window as the limiter applies more reduction. The difference between the threshold and ceiling controls how much the input below the threshold is boosted. Once your limiting is done you can finalize the audio with requantization and noise shaping. If you're exporting at 16-bit or 24-bit you can adjust the word length. Dithering and noise shaping help smooth out any quantization noise ensuring a cleaner output. You can choose different types of shaping depending on your needs. Selecting flat gives you basic dithering, while the other options provide different levels of noise shaping. Okay, let's wrap up what we learned. This is a basic overview of how to use the Cedar Audio Adaptive Limiter 2. It's a versatile tool that lets you control loudness and peaks while preserving the quality of your audio. By adjusting the spectral, temporal, threshold, and ceiling settings you can fine-tune how the limiter reacts to your signal. Remember to use oversampling for extra precision, and apply requantization and noise shaping to clean up your final output. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you get the most out of your newly acquired Cedar Audio Adaptive Limiter 2. Bye, from Headquarters Mastering Studios. Download your free trial version from Cedar Audio and try out this amazing software on your own music.